In the beginning, the heroes gotta suffer the consequences for their sins in the previous film. When they visit this one black lady, they talk about the bounty on their heads. You feel sorry for them, but at the same time, you're low-key happy too, because since they're in danger, it forces the action to start quick in the movie. Only a couple of minutes in, and we already got an action scene on the part they're on the train. The main characters go to the building for the conversation with the Asian guy. During the conversation, even though no one there speaks English, it's still not a good enough reason to not have a Mexican standoff. Boom, boom, tsh. The good guys put the gun down and the leader makes a deal with the dude in charge. We want to make a deal. Afterwards, someone has to go to trial for questioning. Even though the dude promises to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but that, it's neither here nor there because the judge, jury, and executioner has a truth serum, so you can't even lie even if you feel like it. Later on, the villains break into the good guy's place of residence. They take the stairs and not the elevator to give the little kid a head start, but the little kid hates cheating and lets the bad guys catch up to her. If somebody has the guts to harm kids, you don't even want to daydream what they could do to anyone 18 or older. The adults load up on tons of weapons and put an army together to go down with the fight. This army includes some of the toughest people they could find, including the daughter of a famous musical icon, in real life I mean. And just when the odds start heading in their favor, the odds moon walk right back to the dark side. Apparently the enemy has this deadly technique that harms the good guys but makes it look like a suicide. And we all know the best way to kill your enemy is to make it look like they killed themselves. After that, there's a part when the main chick gets taken hostage and it's not a fair fight because boys shouldn't hit girls or whatever. Her boyfriend jumps in and it's still not a fair fight because guns versus hands sucks just as much as boys versus girls the bad guys all like let's see how tough you are without the gun right i'm a man without it he puts the gun down and ko ken attacks the hell out of the trash talking dude since everybody keeps dying and stuff jiminy cricket forces the hero to volunteer their life away and head into the enemy's headquarters when he or she arrives he or she negotiates with the bad guys like hey bad guy if i do you this favor i'm gonna need the killings to stop like yesterday so then the bad guy hooks them up to some hdmi cords which is fitting because we get crystal clear biblical references during the moments the hero thinks their Jesus. And it's probably just the nose, but to me, I don't see the resemblance. But anyways, in the simulation, the hero has to fight a clone, and the clone and the good guy destroy everything for everybody. Buildings get destroyed so the people in the dream have nowhere to live, and the concrete gets destroyed so homeless people have nowhere to live either. Meanwhile, back at the army base, the octopus tech from earlier in the movie is no longer a factor. And while these people are out of danger, the hero jumps face first into danger and gets the crap kicked out of them in world star hip hopish like fashion. The chances of survival don't look too attractive right now, and only a few people believe in humanity's chance of survival during the conversation with the elders. Commander, do you think that we have any chance of surviving? They are vital to humanity's survival. The hero stops fighting and lets the bad guy win, but even when the bad guys win, they still lose and the clone dies to death. The war is finally over and Mr. Sun, Sun, Mr. Golden Sun shines down on the good guys. Those are 24 reasons these movies are the same. You agree? Yes, no, maybe so? If not, politely share your thoughts in the comment section below and click the subscribe button for more 24 reason videos. <gasps> Hey guys, in case you didn't know, we uh, kinda started a podcast. A new episode will be up this Friday and every Friday after that. And if you missed the first four episodes of Hashtag Cinematic Lives Matter, you can listen to them on iTunes or Stitcher. There's a link in the description. Or to make it easier, you could just click here to listen from my website. And back to the best elevator music I ever heard. <laughs> best elevator music I've ever heard.